alkalinity is, is what we want. Our renal system resets our pH every day to about 7.5, 7.6. Your natural blood pH is about that. Alkaline. Um, and obviously we've seen that if we're eating a lot of acidic foods, especially if you ate three meals a day and it was all highly acidic foods, you know, your pH is going to get lower into the more acidic range. And then hopefully the body will reprocess and reset to 7.5. But if you have 30 days of McDonald's, mm -hmm. the renal system's not really going to help. You know, if you take litmus paper and swab your saliva and urine every day over 30 days, it would be an interesting experiment to see if your actual renal system can reset back to 7.5 or 7.6, especially after bombarding it with a daily three-meal course of the finest McDonald's cuisine money can buy. <laughs> You know, so you don't want to do that, you know? And that's where the home prep and the food and, and the vegetables and, and, and soup, man, soup, 24-7, soup will make you poop. And it's just an amazing thing that's so easy to make. You can change the ingredients up and then spice rack. <laughs> Turmeric, cinnamon, cumin, grandma, salad, all these anti bless you, anti-inflammation spices, garlic, basil, and you become the Chef Boyardee of your domain. <laughs> Remember that shit growing up? Chef Boyardee. All the crap that our body's been trying to process through. All those sugar cereals. I was addicted to any cereal that would turn milk chocolatey. That's what my son loves. He's junk. Don't, don't say that your son is not junk. Your son just he knows. He's junk, I'm saying. Thank you. I that was, I, but that's what it sounded like. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> no worries. Uh, just let's slowly make a plan. The, fr the first step, nature's path. They're the only game in town that's making some degree of conscious breakfast based oatmeal and cereals that are, as far as I know, what I've researched, they are a family company that hasn't been bought out by some big conglomerate yet. Hopefully not. And they're making a decent breakfast line. So sugar is, in a, is like heroin. So if you're gonna, you, you have to move in stages and phases to make the switch over to find fuel from, from the food you digest that isn't always sugar driven and sugar derived. I mean, apples, you know, start moving to fruit so that you can get that happening there. But the actual process of absorption, that's the key that when you're stressed out and you're overwhelmed, you know, certain foods, when you start eating well, um, you might get bloated and gassy. Right? I do believe I'm feeling flatulence brewing downstairs. So that's where probiotics and enzymes, digestive enzymes, will help with the process if you take, you know, right before or during, like, green juice. The first test of your digestive system as far as the balance of microflora and yeast, because, you know, you've got alien microbes living inside of you. They're not they're a whole different biology. It's a complete solar system. And so when we try to understand the communication that's going on in the gut with the bacteria and the yeast, when that gets out of balance due to stress and high acidity, and a good round of antibiotics will be like a nuclear bomb to the flora. So that's why you try to recolonize with good acidophilus and probiotic strains, and along with digestive enzymes, depending on what you're ha what's, what's happening. I went through the severity of all those ailments because once the yeast got out of hand, come on in, Deborah. Right, it is Deborah? Yes, sir. I remember. I'm not sir. My name's Dalian, and you're Deborah. Well, sir Dalian. I like that. <laughs> brave Sir Robin, brave Sir Robin, brave Sir Robin. Chaka! The Chakanator's here. So, well, what was I saying? So, when, you know, the think of it like, um, Almost like, um, I don't want to use Guantanamo Bay as, uh, as the analogy, but it's like when you've got good bacteria troops guarding the keep of the castle so that the bacteria strains in the yeast don't get out of hand because they're going to attack the gut lining. They're going to start to eat away at the intestinal wall. Leaky gut syndrome is a big symptom tied to the progressive deterioration of the digestive system, which leads to all kinds of chronic allergies, the bloating, all the things related to absorbing properly. Don't be overwhelmed. You're going to learn so much that you're just going to Xena warrior princess this shit tomorrow and go to the food store and get some awesome food and get in the kitchen and kick some ass. This is our time. We have to heal this so the heart and love and self-love and love for others and compassion can be heard by the ego. This is why we're stuck. He's we're, stuck we're, because he's junk. 
Well, every I don't that, no, I'm just saying. Oh, I don't want to talk. I want to talk about you. You're here because this is about you. What you do for you is going to resonate and amplify for him. It's not selfish to take care of yourself. We all have to do more self care. We're great at giving and serving and doing. It feels good to help people. I love it. I'm exhausted, but I had so much fun sharing last night. <laughs> I passed out like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger in kid not, Kindergarten Cop. Yeah. How was your day? Uh, and it just drops. But I do that because I know I have like a, a cord coming out of my ass. I plug into the wall and I recharge my batteries. I do the practice. I do the breath work. I juice. You know, I do breathing stuff to regenerate the life force because it's like you've got seven chakras trying to work in an elliptical orbit of energy. And if one or this one communication is blocked off or shut down or impaired or stressed out, the flow of energy isn't flowing in a complete elliptical orbit. Seven chakras, seven communication points from the brain down to the, to the crown, from the crown down to the core. And so when I'm singing, I went for three hours, it was because everything's looping. I'm not singing out at you. I'm, I'm expanding as I'm building. And then the energy expands and we all feel that but it's not I'm always an exhausted it was a you know a good thing you know and I've been I've had adrenal fatigue I know what it's like to sleep 14 16 hours a day and every time you eat something you get foggy and you want to go take a nap right after eating something that's your first sign that's you got a little yeasties my yeast was so bad I could take a dump and it probably would look like leavened bread joke yeast joke <laughs> if you got that I just dumped some leavened bread so, it is what it is. But you've got to learn to make friends with this because you need like a 20 to 80% ratio of yeast to, to bacteria in your gut. It's part of a compost. You're a compost. You ever see compost? You've been on a farm? Food compost? This is a compost. And so, there's work to be done. And it starts with just simplifying the diet. Be willing to just simplify and get bland for a while. Get in the kitchen. You know? I did seven years raw. I ate like a mother effing giraffe. I got sprouts growing in my car. <laughs> I'm not gonna piss on the toolbox. There are days I don't, I don't need to, I can eat anything I want. And every three months, I have pizza. <laughs> but I earned it. I earned the right to have pizza without incident downstairs. <laughs> without incident. <laughs> but it was, it, and you know, the occasional glass of Merlot. Cheap date. I'm drunk on one glass. It's great. I couldn't drink for 15 years because every time I drank, I would get like throbbing pain, headache. Couldn't stop farting for hours. <laughs> couldn't go on a date. Yeah, how about a glass of Merlot? Oh shit! There's no second date after this. <laughs> you know, man. It's just like, come on. And so, like, I would bring sprouts and make my own food. I go to wedding parties and wedding events, like uh, you know, the the reception and the cocktail hour. I bring a bag of Tupperware with my own fucking food. <laughs> And everyone's like, what the hell are you eating? That ain't, that ain't the Chilean sea bass. Like, no, this is a sunflower sprout. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you, you tap in, because once you start making some serious changes over the course of the 21 day, the pineal gland cycle does, any habit forming behavior, right, 21 days, it locks in, double it, 42, and then triple it, then you're starting to own it. So when you really start to discipline yourself, because that's the hard part, when the ego feels scattered and the mind is scattered and the food isn't being absorbed properly, you're kind of living and dying by post-it notes. You've got all this stuff moving around and you're just trying to organize it and ground it and get it downstairs. But be kind to yourself because you have to be patient. And patience is a thing that our culture definitely struggles with. I had to learn patience. I had to be forced into it. So I know, I've been there. If we could take a pill and be patient, I'm sure Merck would try to come up with some idea, right? Yeah, but this is not going to happen. Peshiakalaka, it's like, yeah. Peshiakana, or whatever, you know. And then like hundreds of side effects. You'll grow a third buttock and your kneecap will fall off or whatever. So as we laugh, we're trying to celebrate the fact that there's work here to be done. Because we're trying to work to find our authentic self and feel good about that. That's when this fire and this stove is cooking and you're absorbing, you're absorbing life. Not just food. Food is life. And so the choice of your food is obviously going to affect the output of your mind and personality. Right? You ever eat something that just kind of changes your mood? Which gets us to the vagus nerve. 
And now it's science, finally. We're seeing a definitive relationship between the digestive system and the blood flow between the heart and the brain and the gut. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> Thanks. You happy? Take credit. Yeah, whatever. The bottom line is we feel it every day. With everything that we eat, we feel how it affects our mind and our thoughts and our moods. Right? That's why we're here, because we want to improve. So digestive enzymes, you know? Garden of Life makes a decent one, I found. But that's for my body. You have to go with someone and do some muscle testing. If you ever done reflexology, you can just go there, bring somebody, blindfold yourself, and have somebody muscle test any supplement you want to just see how your body, you know, can, it can sense the purity and the potency of any any product. I took a girl to Whole Foods. This is an interesting talk about power. She was born the triplet. She was in the middle of her siblings. So in in utero. She's being crushed. So when she was born, her clavicle was very, very misshapen. So her whole time from birth, her karma, give me some room. <laughs> give me some mother effing room fighting for space. I want to come out. I want to live. I want to have a life. You're crowding me, bro, sis. What the F? And she was born this four foot eleven pow, just full. And she, she came to me after, you know, one of my classes and she could only eat 10 foods. Same thing with me. I, for three years, I ate 10 foods. 10 fuck. And I rotated them, and I got creative, and I came up with recipes. You learn you can put anything in a stuffed pepper. You can just cook it and whip it up and mix it up, blend it up, and just, you know, I just had like these very simple, bland um, recipes. But the key to it is you got to research um, food that is soluble fiber. Insoluble fiber is good for you too. Quinoa and there's other great grains. But when you've got inflammation and irritation, the insoluble fiber foods can be somewhat aggravating because of the water content or lack of. And soluble fiber like sweet potatoes and avocados can be pureed and soft, almost like baby food. I was making soups, I was liquefying puree, whatever it took. I wanted to live. Because I was in, I was in an ego that still was dealing with like a, it was primal, I want to live, I don't want to die. So there's fear there. Then there was also ego, it's like, I want to do this, I want to make music. That was ego, because most artists have a certain narcissistic tendency, because they think that all this is going to validate your existence on the planet Earth. No. no. It's not. Your heart validates the love that you bring and share. And I had to learn it by losing everything. I left music behind for four years because I realized that if I don't stop this, I will die. And I had to go to the mountain, so to speak, and be alone and be in the diet and be on the yoga mat and leave it all to know that this, this is a gift that compliments me, does not validate me. I could stop tomorrow and we just go play music with autistic kids. You know, I'm already two years into Sadhu. I had a fire two years ago. So I pulled my big boy pants up and I said, okay, let's try this out. My van is equipped for the apocalypse. I move around, people put me up, I stay here, I work, and I trust in God and I know that this is where I need to be. And I'm not scared. I cried for about a half hour, just losing four computers, hundreds of drums, my whole life, or what I thought was my life, or it was my life for that period of time. And God said, I need to evict you, here's my foot shoved right up your ass, get out into the streets and take this to the people. And I'm embracing that. And I'm always saying, keep, think from here, feel from here, act from here, speak from here, work from here. That's the mantra. So I hope you're feeling this because this is part of the work. My tone, my sincerity, my authenticity comes from nothing but just this is what I've, I've lived. Well, Harry Potter wellness wizard. And I just want to share a perspective based on Steps that I've taken, steps that did work, kind of work, didn't really work till later until I did step A, B, and C. And then that, over time, brought things through a healing process that allowed, like Ayurvedic medicine in India, they're not about really raw foods and sprouting and juicing because it's a damp, cold diet. So if you have a lot of yeast going on, the damper and colder your food doesn't really set up the disposition for uh, rebalancing. So you have to do things with warming and soup and yoga and breathing. We're going to do some exercises in just a bit to just stimulate all this blood flow so that this brain-heart communication highway can improve and heighten so that you don't feel these lulls so that when you do eat something, you're like, yeah. And so it isn't always sugar or caffeine as the vice to get that, yeah. Because we're sugar addicts. We're adrenally so tired that we, 
we, we're, we're professional, we use stimulants, caffeine, nicotine, and sugar. It's okay, no judgment. Guilty. Whatever, yeah, <laughs> embrace it. These are, these is how we, this is how we've learned as a society, a little, this is how we learned as a society, this is how we learned as a society, this is how we learned as a society to compensate for the adrenal fatigue. Yeah, this is how we learned to compensate. <laughs> Bobby, Cindy, so anyway, um, and this is all what we're learning, and then when we feel the definitive effects on our mind and our energy levels, this is where the yoga, you know, it's almost like when we do yoga, right, you're doing yoga. So you get in the blood flow and you feel better, right, for a while, a day or two, you know. But think of it like you're, you're in the ocean, right, and you have a life preserver on. There's little holes in the life preserver. And you're sitting there while you're treading water, blowing air into the life preserver as it's simultaneously leaking energy in air out. That's, that's what's happening. You see that visual? That's why we want to patch the hull of the ship, and it takes a year or two of really strict focused eating. You don't have to starve yourself. You just got to get the acid, alkaline, pH food charts, and if you want them, just let me give your email, and I will spam you all these scantily clad pictures of me with kale. Very <laughs> sexy. And I'll send you, just to making sure you're still here, just, uh, and lists of foods that you can use, and just print out, put it on your refrigerator so that you can realize it is hard to make the changes, but it's not impossible. You just say, wow, I can eat this, this, this. Oh, I had no idea. And then you could start putting more alkaline foods in your diet. And then you could start, you have to see it as a petri dish kind of thing, seventh grade biology. You have to experiment with your blood type because we all come have from different ancestral backgrounds. So our blood type is different, and we grew up with different areas that produce different foods. So there's certain foods that are actually quite good for your DNA that really don't work for mine because of where you're from and where your genetic line has come from. So that's part of the fun. This is part of the creativity where you learn to discover how your body you know, is guided and works with certain foods. And living, smile, it's all good. You're going to be fine. I'm alive. I'm supposed to be dead four times. Look at it. No, no way. Not having it. Do you want to live? Well, I'm going to die. Get excited about it. We're here to die. That's the yoga philosophy. We use these tools to be, prepare ourselves for a majestic and glorious death. Right? And it comes more clear the more you live and have experiences. We're just like, okay, we gotta help inspire each other. Just we just gotta keep tuning up the car engine. Take the car to the shop, change the oil filter, oil, new trans. This is what we're doing. Let's help each other. Let's laugh at this because, you know, how's Wendy's food? You should be you should be shitting more than you've ever shit the whole weekend. You should be shit machines. There should be turds that you shit machine. That's my new my, dot com. That's my new website. Shitmachine.com. Actually, sounds like a funk band. We shit. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry. See, that's I just, I'll pull it back. Gemini coming back, coming back. You know, I'm for your thought. So anyway, <laughs> for your thought. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> All right. So you get it, right? Anybody who's an air and fire sign, you're very, very pitta. In the yoga philosophy, the Ayurvedic has pitta, uh, vata, and, and, and kapha. These are like different speeds of the nervous system. So you know when you're air and fire, you tend to be predisposed to be very, very busy thinkers. Earth and water are just much more nurturing and slow and steady and grounded and pragmatic, so they have like a kapha vada thing. But if the, if the digestive system's out of whack, normally you should be, like if you're an earth sign, there should be a steadiness, but you're, you could get really fiery and manic because things aren't processing. You have alien civilization living inside you. That's what the bacteria is. It's a solar system. When you look at the body in these playful terms, little kids, your organs are your kids, the bacteria, you learn to befriend them. You learn to just make sit quietly, put your hands on your stomach and say, hey, everybody, how you doing down there? How are you today? I know it sounds stupid. No one has to know you're doing it. Nothing has to leave this room. <laughs> Don't tell anybody what you do at home. Self-care is exactly that, self-care. What you do behind closed doors is your business. It's self-care. When I'm mad, sometimes I don't want to do yoga. I go take a lightsaber and I go out into the woods. <laughs> I do something with it. I do something with the energy. I don't hold it in. That's the key. Do not hold it in. If you're sad, well up, cry, grieve. 
Happiness, sadness, joy, anger, guilt, shame, it's all the same thing. Your body doesn't care. That's why they know. They've now proven that when you smile, and even though you feel like a shit sandwich inside, <laughs> if you fake the smile, the muscles will stimulate the proper healthy hormones in the brain to help you feel enhanced immune, immunicologically. 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 I don't know why I chose that path of word choice. Yeah, immunologically, you know. But you understand, you know this. Like, and this is how you work with your mind on the days that maybe if things are feeling weak or not working well, you use these other practices, the breathing, the meditation, the exercise, take a walk, move the blood, move the blood. It can help pull you out of the funk. Right, George? Chai Chi! Energy, man. And the consistency of your practice and commitment will help level off and get the blood into the vagus nerve so that the digestive system can start to amp up. Again, putting more wood into that fire to keep that fire like when the fire keeper. The whole weekend is about just keeping the fire steady and strong throughout the three days of the intention of this festival. Think of it as one big digestive overhaul. We want to be doing things through these different practices, and it's food, it's, it's yoga, it's breathing, it's nutrition, it's, it's surrounding yourself with good people and doing things that you love to do, asserting your will with honor and integrity, so that how you go about you know, making money is lined with this honor and integrity. You don't pull a Bernie Madoff who was so, you know, out of whack with his me, 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 and it's amazing the clients he attracted to him were all the same type of animal. Me, 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 me. Let's get rich and throw everyone under the bus. Fuck you. You know? It's terrible. We can't, it's killing us all. We all feel the ripple effect of a few bad apples who manipulate the system. I believe the system can work. There's abundance out there for all of us. We just have to figure out how to get in there and work together with honor and always concern ourselves with other people. The win 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 situation. I may not know you, but if I pick up a phone and I'm going to do business or do yoga or do a kirtan, hey, how are you? You have a wife and kids. You have a husband and kids. You have a house. You have a mortgage payment. So how do we do something together so that we can make this work? Because you, you have to pay your bills. I have to pay my bills. When you actually care about the people that you work with. Holy cow, what a concept. That means the heart is in third chakra. Heart and the core are working together. And empathy is kind of feeling like it's, on, you know, it's, kind of scattered around. We need the leadership to embody that. And it's more than just talk. We need to take Congress to a horse farm, have them hug some horses, <laughs> clean out their colons, get them on the yoga mat. Whatever, I don't care. Just get them to feel something, mm -hmm. if they're even capable, because it's harder. You know, Sometimes the older we get, the more strict and stuck we get in our belief systems. Belief systems are just an exaggeration of the ego. That's why when I opened up last night, I said, you know, regardless of what your religious belief is, chanting is just this beautiful doorway to strengthen your relationship to your divine relationship to God. I can't tell you what God is. I have no business. Follow me. This is God. Worship me. I know the way. I'm the guru. Nobody knows you. Well, that's what I mean. But there are people who posture that. Mm -hmm. Just feel your way. Yeah. And trust it's love, man. It's love. We're born love. You saw those kids. If you were there in that room last night, do not forget the feeling of hearing those kids sing. If you were there. That, it was just, it's just beyond the beyond, man. And that brings you back to remember, it's going to take work. And there's going to be days you're not going to want to. You're going to look at your, all your nice red lentils and kale and collard greens that you just bought, and you look, oh, I hate fucking soup. 